I am Dr. Hans Deer. I have a doctor in health science and uh, I am epidemiologically trained to look at the disease epidemic around the world, which is largely centered on non-communicable diseases, or as we say today, chronic diseases. And so my concern has been to contribute to a velvet revolution in medicine. Velvet because it's smooth. Velvet because it's bloodless. But nevertheless, we need to do everything we can to change the system that we have right now because the system that we have right now is not cutting the, um, the epidemic by attacking the causes of these problems. We're very good in symptomatic treatment. We can make people feel better and sometimes there's a place for that, of course. We are very good when it comes to episodic diseases. We have some trauma, we have some fractures. Of course, that's not the time to eat broccoli, right? But when it comes to 84% of the money that we spend in our society today on health care, 84% goes to chronic diseases, and we have no really good indication that we're really, that we're really turning this disease around. We don't have cures for most of these chronic diseases because they relate to our lifestyle. How we eat, how we drink, do we get enough sleep, do we have a supportive network, you know, stress management. These are the kind of things, getting enough sleep, being a nice person, having um, an altruistic orientation towards life, you know, trying to serve others. You know, once you have these things in place, once you have this philosophy and it's underpinned by a very simple diet of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes and maybe a few nuts, maybe, then I think, and you perhaps bring some exercise in, then you have the prescription for a happier and longer life. And that's what I'm all about. When I was working on my doctorate, I came across a study from uh, a small portion in Finland. And there was a young epidemiologist by the name of Pekka Puska. And he, against all the collegial resistance, said, we need to change the diet of the people in Karelia. He did. And he changed everything, even my life. Because ultimately, with this kind of a new orientation, I became open to the invitation of working with Nathan Pritikin. Now, Nathan Pritikin was not a physician, he was an engineer, but he had some disease issues in his own life. He began to study this thing out, he had a photographic memory, he was a genius in my thinking, and I joined him to begin to collect some of the data that was coming out there, and I became a changed person. I mean, it was just like, it was like I had gone to Lord, you know, where all the miracles happen? And uh, I had left my position at the university and people wondered, I had lost it. I mean, this was an outsider at the time, but he had the data and the people came. They came from everywhere and within days, the cholesterol dropped, the insulin uh, medications had to be reduced. Uh, people said, uh, the mental fog is lifting. Uh, I mean, I had never seen anything like this. I had no idea that this could happen and I had a, a master's degree in nutrition. And so it was this kind of a thing that really opened my eyes, but ultimately I recognized that I need to take this program to the people everywhere. And so while these residential programs can be very, very helpful in providing intensive uh, education, I felt it was not really uh, always uh, available to everybody. And so I come from a humble background in Germany. I lived up to that and I said, I need to take it to the community. And I basically repackaged some of the basic concepts that I learned and saw in action. I took them to the community. I went to a small community in Canada and there are 400 people showing up for a four week program, meeting four times a week and the people just ate it up. And the results were not all that different from the live-in program that I had seen at the Pritikin Longevity Center. So this then really, you know, this really stirred me up and, uh, you know, I had uh, kind of a, a love for people anyway. And um, uh, ultimately it uh, frog leaped across Canada, uh, went to India. I mean, I recognized I could take millionaires they were eager to learn these kind of concepts and within 10 days, within 20 days, the results were there and these people, this was 30 some years ago, and these people are still meeting 
regularly in Bangalore, you know, the Silicon Valley of India. Because these rich people knew they wanted to live, and they recognized that if I want to live, I have to make some changes, and they did. Well, as the program uh, developed more and more, and it became solidified, and I began to collect data, and I published it, I knew I had to get a name for it, right? So this became then the CHIP program, the Coronary Health Improvement Program. Ultimately, it turned into a larger program because we began to understand that when you take care of coronary heart disease, by using a simple diet exercise and these lifestyle components, you're not just affecting the coronary arteries, you affect the penile arteries, yeah, impotence, you know, all of these kind of things. You affect uh, the, 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 uh, the, the arteries to the eye, to the ears, to the mind, and all these things begin to uh, evolve now to repair themselves. The body is in a default position to go for repair and optimal health. And so then we, uh, as I began to see the beauty of what was happening there, the eyes were opening up more and more. And I saw the blood pressure coming down and I began to realize that kidney disease could actually be uh, improved. We had people coming into the program. Uh, they said, can we come in? We're on kidney dialysis two weeks now. Or they said, we are on, we're waiting for a transplant. <laughs> and I'm not a physician. I have a doctor in health science, which combines medical, sort of, and uh, public health. And I said, am I not taking a chance here? And wouldn't you know, it responded exceedingly well. Within six months, many of our renal diabetic patients, kidney disease patients, no longer were on waiting lists. The disease, the, the, the body began to repair itself. One of the blessings has been to be able to also get involved in writing. So uh, we're involved in some research work. We're doing a one-year randomized clinical trial with a large HMO here in North America. And uh, we have 50 coronary patients uh, in this program. And uh, we are trying to use those very same approaches that were used by Dr. Ornish, by Dr. Esselstyn, pretty much the same, measuring the carotid and to see what happens there. And we're just about five more months to go. So we're very excited about this. At the same time, uh, I was able to uh, not only publish some of the work, there's some 30 some scientific reports out in the peer review uh, journals, but also we were very, very fortunate to uh, be able to team up with a colleague of mine. We wrote a book called Health Power. Health Power has done very, very well. Over two million copies in circulation, 26 languages. And uh, we have had this around for about 15 years, but we upgraded every three, four years. And it has a companion volume called the Optimal Diet Cookbook. So, you know, we're trying to make a small contribution to some of the big heroes that we have admired through all these years that have helped us to become who we are. One of my concerns is uh, that uh, in this uh, movement, that we're not just focusing on the issue of meat versus plant foods, but that we also recognize the, the tremendous pressure that is on the population towards embracing processed, engineered foods. And so we begin to realize more and more that we have to help, to, we have to help people to understand that we have to have a broader concept. It's not just meat versus plants, it's also plant-based whole foods. That's number one. Number two, we have to also recognize the importance of perhaps uh, the um, support system, the social support system, helping people to tie into social emotional health issues, maybe even not leaving out the spiritual dynamic here in being of service to other people. I think all of these things are becoming, you know, they, they, they fuse to create this uh, opportunity for the body to really have optimal chances to healing itself. And that's what it's all about, empowering the body to do its work.